Hey there, uh, Zach sent me this pen, and this is a pretty nice pen, uh, he saw it in a catalogue uh, of, I think he said his mother's art school, it's a Montmartre calligraphy pen, reminds me a little bit of a Brangel calligraphy pen that I reviewed not too long ago, so it's the same shape and some, it shares some features, I'll do a quick rundown of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample, so as to the pen, um, Zach said it's a, it's a bit cheap, I think. It does feel a bit cheap, but I don't think it's particularly bad at all. So, a couple of things we see, first of all, on top there, you get some vent holes to make sure the cap doesn't draw a vacuum. Uh, then you have more Montmartre on there. Right now it's uh, upside down, but it leaves. Whoops, believe me, it's there. I just dropped it. Um, the uh, I love the material. Nice marble-like finish. Um, simple gold band uh, at the um, barrel. And that's it, the end of the barrel, there's nothing. And you have the section. The section has this rubberized stuff on it. I think it's actually just a bit of rubber. Um, plastic and then rubber. Uh, yes, you can see it is a little bit cheapish because you can just sort of pull that off there. Uh, then you have the nib. It comes with two nibs, this set, a fine and a broad. You can see it's a calligraphy nib, right? Sort of flat, italic nib. Uh, very decent feeds, they really keep up well with the ink flow, I'll show you that in the writing sample. Uh, it came with um, uh, one black cartridge, but you can put in a Schmidt converter, as you see here, um, just give you a little bit more choices as to ink. And I wonder, because this barrel looks like it's just one piece, I wonder if you could, oops, I'm dropping everything today, uh, it looks like uh, you might be able to turn this into an eyedropper. Um, that's, uh, that will be interesting. So you've got that fine and the broad nib. I'll show you both of those side by side. Um, I think they're pretty interesting. A nice calligraphy nib. Now those calligraphy purists among you are definitely going to say, no, no, but you need a dip nib. Well, yes, that will give you very good results. But I think if you're learning calligraphy, uh, then a fountain pen for calligraphy is very good because you don't have to dip all the time. You can focus more on the shape of the letters as opposed to dip one or two letters, dip one or two letters, etc. So I think that kind of works. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? I like the overall look. I think it looks quite cool. You could even put this in a chest pocket and it would actually look quite impressive because of that nice marble uh, finish they used. Um, I like that. I like the fact you can post it. It's, it's light, easy for calligraphy, it won't tire your hands. Uh, I like the fact that it's normal shape, not, not that long elongated stuff that a lot of calligraphy pens have. Um, so I, I, I like that. Um, things I, I, I really love the ink flow. You get a, the broad nib really is broad. Um, and it just keeps up with the ink flow like there's no problem whatsoever. So it just keeps going and going. I, I really love it. Very nice wet flow. Um, that's very good. Things I don't like about it, well yes, the pen does feel a bit cheap. And if you look at some of the parts, for example this bit of the uh, sorry, focus. You see here you got that little hole. It's 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 little. It looks like the fit isn't entirely perfect. Um, that rubberized stuff is not of the best quality, as you can see. But hey, it gets the job done. It's definitely a nice pen. Um, it's very light. I prefer heavier pens, but for this calligraphy stuff, light is not so bad. It won't tie your hands as quickly. So I think it's pretty cool. So Zach, thanks for sending me this. Let's take a couple of measurements capped, it's 135 millimeters, uncapped, it's 123, section diameter, got about 8 millimeters at the narrowest point and just near the barrel, it's about 10. Um, weight is very light, I'm assuming something like 10, yeah, it's about 10 grams, so that's a pretty light pen. Um, I think we need to see a writing sample. So I hope this was useful. Zach, thanks for sending me this, I enjoy it, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so writing with this more... I just inked it up, sorry, I had to get an ink flow going, it's not the fault of the pen. This Montmartre pen, the ink is... Um, 
what is the ink? The ink is Conway Stewart Tavy. Uh, so what you see here is the broad nib, and it's it's definitely very broad. You see, you get excellent flow. I mean, this has to be a good feed to keep up with this relatively fast writing. Yes, I know I'm making a mistake here. Um, no skipping with a lot of ink flow. So for calligraphy this is really going to be useful. Uh, one of these squares is 5x5 five five millimeters. So as you can see this one of these lines is pretty much a third of that so it's really a broad nib. Now clearly I mean writing a letter with that is not going to be extremely pleasant although it will definitely add character to your writing but it's so such a broad nib that you're really going to burn through paper like there's no tomorrow it is a calligraphy nib it means you get some nice automatic line variation without adding any pressure just the way the, the nib is shaped and this is is really um, a nib, a pen type, uh, that is meant for some calligraphic purposes, right? Um, I, for real gothic calligraphy, I would probably prefer a dip pen with really sharp angles. This is always a little bit... Well, it's actually not bad. So, I mean, you can... I mean, when, when you're doing this type of Old English or gothic calligraphy, what you want is really sharp angles between these those types of things and that can be a little bit difficult because the nice thing about this nib is that the corners are not too sharp so they don't dig into the paper when you do this and with some of these pens they do now when they do that you get a really sharp angle but here it's always going to be a little bit rounded off at that point but that's okay I'm just bickering here for general purpose calligraphy for, for learning stuff this is really nice and as I said it will add a bit of uh, character uh, to your writing, uh, signatures, etc. Now, that is just one nib, one section you got with the pen. So I'm grabbing another one. This is their fine nib. I have to prime that a bit, get some ink in there. Um, whoops, I was exaggerating a bit. And as you can see, this is really a lot um, narrower. I would say that is, well, maybe not, well, maybe it is half of that other one. Two, three, four, five, yeah, so it's about 50% of that broad nib. Um, this too will give you nice line variation, and this you could use for everyday writing, considering your handwriting is not too small because if you write like this then it's it's going to be a little bit hard to read uh, but if you have a somewhat roomier type of handwriting as I do then I think you can get away with it perfectly well and that can really add a bit of flourish to your writing okay uh, also you can definitely do that, that uh, calligraphic stuff with it although I'm not really a when I do calligraphy, I usually do it very big. I don't really like this type of small stuff. Um, but you could do that. Uh, use it for other types of, of calligraphy. That was a bit of gothic, and here we have a little bit of foundational. Uh, that's an option. Uh, you could do something like unseal, which is a bit more of a sort of Celtic... Uh, So, that kind of stuff, it's all possible. I think this is a nice pen. Look at the ink flow. This one too. Nice wet line. Um, flows well. Doesn't skip. I think it's a very decent, well-made little calligraphy pen. That's definitely good if you're trying out some calligraphy. You don't want to dip your pen all the time. I think it's a cool pen. So, Zach, thanks for sending this to me. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm going to enjoy it. I uh, hope this was useful, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.